Hey, well, hi, I'm uh, David Burns. I'm with Rescue Reston. We're uh, affiliated with the Reston Citizens Association, and I'm here this morning with Walter Alcorn, Supervisor, Fairfax County Board of Supervisors in the Hunter Mill District. Uh, so thanks for joining us this morning, Walter. We'll uh, talk a little bit about Reston and open space. Rescue Reston was formed in 2012. Our mission is basically to preserve and, uh, and maintain the open space in Reston as part of the community. So uh, thanks for being here. To start out, let's talk a little bit about historically Reston has been a, a little different community than a lot of other places in Fairfax County or elsewhere. There's open space, there's recreational opportunities that's historically been part of the community um, of Reston. So would you, would you want to talk a little bit about, uh, about Reston's historic open space contribution to the community and, uh, and the community's well-being? Sure. Well, you know, the, the one thing that really sets Reston apart from a lot of other places is it was planned. I mean, literally a planned community going back to the early 1960s. And as part of Reston's development, the open space, uh, the natural areas, the trail system has really become a central uh, reason why a lot of folks came here, uh, decided to move here, live here, and stay here. So I think we, we definitely saw uh, or have seen during the pandemic um, the benefit of those open spaces mm -hmm. and the outdoor recreation that so many of us have taken advantage of. Uh, when other alternatives weren't available. Yeah, no, that's, a, that's a good point. And now with the arrival of uh, Metro, anybody who drives around Reston, particularly town center area, sees all the development uh, that's going on. It's, it's really booming. So there, there has to be a, a balance between that development, the commercial and residential development in Reston, and also maintaining that open space, that commitment to open space, commitment to those kinds of recreational um, opportunities and activities. Um, how do you, as a supervisor, think about that, and how do you kind of try to strike that balance? Well, it, it's a really critical balance for the long-term sustainability of, of Reston as a community, both for residents, but also for businesses that mm -hmm. are here, for visitors. Um, you know, the original uh, principles of Reston included the idea of a place where people could live, work, and play. Mm -hmm. So I think maintaining that and continuing that, updating that is, is one of the key challenges that we face. Certainly, uh, with, uh, with uh, my becoming a Hunter Mill supervisor at the beginning of 2020, uh, my first board matter was to create a task force and a study for the comprehensive plan for Reston and basically to bring folks together, primarily citizens, uh, as a way to, to review and um, course correct where necessary uh, that balance. So mm -hmm. I think that, and that process uh, continues, uh, hopefully it'll be wrapping up. Uh, by the end of uh, uh, 2021. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we appreciate your work on that uh, that tax task force for the Reston Comprehensive Plan and the way it, it has kind of integrated that vision that's always been a part of uh, a part of the Reston community. So a little more specific uh, as to the golf courses, particularly in Reston, which are key components of the open space um, in Reston. We've got the north course, north of the toll road, Hidden Creek Country Club, and the south course, Reston National, which is south of the toll road. Hidden Creek's had some recent uh, history around it, which you were involved in. Um, it was purchased by a developer, Wheelock. They had some plans to amend the comprehensive plan, which provides that that will continue to be open space. And their plans were to do some sort of development there, and they tried to get community support. Um, I know a lot of residents contacted your office and contacted you, people who lived adjacent to and in communities adjacent to the golf course. And based on that feedback, uh, you issued a statement that said that um, community sentiment was basically running about five to one against opening the comprehensive plan. And you issued a statement and said that that matter was closed. Um, we now have developers who have acquired the South Course, the Reston National Golf Course. 
obviously a, a similar situation. A lot of people live adjacent to that golf course. It's protected in the comprehensive plan as open space. Would your approach to the south course be the same as the approach you took to the Hidden Creek golf course? Um, yes, uh, it, it, it would. Um, you know, I, I've said all along, even before I became supervisor, that the critical piece of any change to the comprehensive plan, particularly one where you would have open space going to developed property, uh, would be support of the residents that are most affected. And in this mm -hmm. case, uh, the communities that surround the golf course uh, would basically need to ask me for such a change to the comprehensive plan. Mm -hmm. So with the Hidden Creek example, the owner of Hidden Creek did approach me very early in uh, my, my time on the board and said that they wanted to um, change Hidden Creek. They wanted to, to do some uh, development there uh, so I told them to go talk to the communities mm -hmm. surrounding the golf course. Um, they had been in some contact with communities already, uh, but that process went on for uh, the better part of eight or nine months um, after uh, I was sworn into office. At that point, I had gotten so much feedback from uh, adjoining residents, people, uh, communities uh, that adjoined the golf course that it really wasn't even close. You mm -hmm. know, the, the, the sentiment was, I believe at the time, about five to one mm -hmm. uh, against changing the comprehensive plan from its current designation as golf course uh, for that property. So um, there was a good amount of anxiety in the community at the time, and I, I saw which way the, the feedback was going, so, so I just shut it down. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, my interest is not in creating uncertainty in the community, uh, any anxiety, uh, but frankly, for, for issues like this, I want to make sure that the community uh, is not only engaged, but frankly, the community is driving any mm -hmm. changes that ultimately happen. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, we're now looking at a similar situation uh, around Reston National. Right. So I'll be waiting to hear from communities and mm -hmm. uh, residents most affected uh, mm -hmm. who live around that golf course. Yeah, so, so it's very much a bottom-up process that, that's driven by the people who are most affected by yeah. any change to the golf course. And, and that's, a, that's a broader issue that mm -hmm. um, I, I feel like uh, that this is one of the things, frankly, I want to change about Reston, uh, is that political culture where, uh, you know, and all the way back to the beginning, and I'm not saying this wasn't a good thing and it, and it got us to where we are, but we've tended to be a little bit top down in Reston mm -hmm. uh, on some issues, particularly as it relates to land use. Uh, planning and growth. So now that we have the comprehensive plan as the guide, you know, we, we had the Reston master plan and that guided the first 50 years or so of Reston's development. Um, in the last decade, we've moved to using the county comprehensive plan mm -hmm. as the means to guide future development. So as we've done that, to me, it's extremely important to make sure that the community is actually driving any changes to the comprehensive mm -hmm. plan. Uh, and that is more of a bottoms up approach. And it's different. Mm -hmm. But I think it it builds more stability long term in uh, Reston's land use plans, uh, and frankly, it uh, uh, it assures that uh, uh, the community is 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 driving the result, but also the community is is having to step up and, mm -hmm. and actually take some responsibility. So right. it's not just me. Right. Right. Uh, it actually is the community mm -hmm. that uh, has to really think about these things and yeah. then make the call. To a large extent. Yeah, I think the, the point about it being a more stable sort of a process is, is an important one. Supervisors come and go, That's right. but the community is relatively stable, and it's also more inclusive and, and you know more empowering, I think, for the community. Yeah, and, and, and we've seen, you know, in other places in the region over the years where where we have had stability and other places where we not have not had stability, mm -hmm. um, a place where, where there has been stability, some decisions that were made, I think mostly very good, is Arlington. You know, as an example, where where Arlington 60, 50, 60 years ago um, made some decisions about the location of metro, uh, about where to channel growth, and frankly, um, protecting residential neighborhoods outside mm -hmm. of those growth areas. Um, they're updating that, of course, over the years. But by and large, that's created uh, an environment where there's stability, predictability for the residents, uh, for developers, you know, for landowners. Mm -hmm. Uh, and frankly, for those of us that uh, 
are on public bodies that actually mm -hmm. have to make decisions about infrastructure investment right. and right. tax rates and things mm -hmm. like that. Right. Okay. Uh, and just a follow-up question on the uh, task force that you're leading on the REST and Comprehensive Plan. Mm -hmm. uh, that does not involve the golf courses, correct? That is correct. Uh, I said from the very beginning that the question of whether or not the Comprehensive Plan should change relating to either of the golf course uses was out of scope mm -hmm. of the task force. So the task force is looking at a lot of things. You know, they're looking at the balance between development, transportation, they're looking at uh, uh, some specific areas in Reston that might need clarification in the comprehensive plan, but the golf courses are not part of that process mm -hmm. at all. Okay. It's important for the community to be engaged and important for the community to communicate with, with you and with other supervisors who, who are like-minded. Uh, what's the best way for people to in the community to do that if they feel strongly about an issue? You know, the best way, uh, there's several ways that you can do it. Obviously, contacting my office mm -hmm. uh, is one, one way. 703-478-0283. Uh, uh, Hunter Mill at fairfaxcounty.gov mm -hmm. uh, is the email address. So basically, contacting my office by uh, email or by phone uh, is the most direct way. Mm -hmm. uh, I also... I uh, am sort of uh, a big person for town halls, mm -hmm. so we've done several of those um, virtually. Actually, before the pandemic, I had two months, mm -hmm. uh, and I was able to get in a couple of in-person town halls right. uh, before then. Uh, that's another opportunity to, uh, to get feedback to me directly. And then, of course, there's old-fashioned snail mail, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and mailing. But, Definitely go, you know, folks that are interested should go to the Hunter Mill web page mm -hmm. on the Fairfax County uh, website. Mm -hmm. uh, or, uh, um, um, so that's, that's, that's one way. And I, I think it's also important to recognize, so the Board of Supervisors ultimately is the governing body for Fairfax County. And, um, but it's not just the board uh, that does this. So, for example, uh, we have a planning commission uh, and the Hunter Mill representative on the Planning Commission is Reston President John Carter. Mm -hmm. So um, we also have uh, in Reston uh, the Planning and Zoning Committee, you know, that uh, reviews and provides input on uh, various rezoning and other uh, development applications as they come through the process. So there are actually a lot of ways that um, people can provide input, mm -hmm. can participate, and I really do encourage folks who are interested to get involved, mm -hmm. um, as well as advocacy organizations mm -hmm. like yeah. Rescue Reston, right. uh, in order to, frankly, mm -hmm. help um, drive some of these decisions that are so critical mm -hmm. to the long-term future of Reston. Yeah, that's good advice. And just a shameless plug here, uh, on the Rescue Reston website, rescuereston.org, there is a link where people can communicate directly with Supervisor Alcorn and um, Thank cha you. So Chairman. I don't have to remember my numbers. So cha right. Chairman McKay, right? <laughs> you can you can just go to rescuereston.org. Um, so and, and by the way, thank you for mentioning Chairman McKay. So mm -hmm. so in Reston, there are two elected officials at the local level, um, the county level, that uh, folks uh, that that represent us. I'm one as the mm -hmm. Hunter District Supervisor, but there's also the chairman of the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors that is elected by at large mm -hmm. by right. basically all 1.2 million um, um, folks in Fairfax mm -hmm. County. Right. So, so, right. So you have two people on the on the Board of Supervisors to uh, to make your opinions known to. So a, a more specific question, um, we have learned, uh, our organization has learned that a uh, qualified buyer approached one of the golf course owners um, asking uh, that they consider entertaining an offer to purchase uh, that golf course. And that inquiry was met with a statement that a deal was already in the works with the county, um, whatever that means. Do you have any knowledge at all of any behind the scenes deal that may be percolating no, there, yeah. there is no deal pending with the county. Mm -hmm. um, it is private property, so mm -hmm. certainly the private property owner is, is free to um, sell the property to right. whomever they want, to uh, talk to whoever they want, um, and within reason say whatever they want, but there is no deal pending mm -hmm. with the county. That's okay. Not, well, that's, that's not accurate. That's good news and should give some people comfort uh, who, are, who are concerned about 
the machinations that may be happening here. Uh, and another concern is, and th this I think kind of goes back to about 10 years ago, um, Northwestern Mutual Insurance owned the South Course, the Reston National Golf Course. And they tried to make, you know, what I'll characterize as an end run around the comprehensive plan. Yeah. Um, they asserted and tried to get the zoning county zoning administrator to agree that they had a right to develop there. Uh, so this went through the zoning administrator's office. They, they opposed that. Uh, county attorney's office opposed it, went to the Board of Zoning Appeals, ultimately to Fairfax uh, District Court. Um, and um, they lost. And then Northwestern Mutual uh, Insurance sold the course to the current owners, the developers. Um, is there, are you aware of any kind of legal process short of amending the comprehensive plan by which developers could assert that they have the right to develop uh, either one of the golf courses? I'm not. I'm not aware of any, of any process uh, whereby the owner of either of the golf courses <coughs> could go forward with any sort of development plan. Now that said, they could submit a mm -hmm. you know, rezoning application. Um, there's a long history in Fairfax County, though, of us respecting the comprehensive plan and following the comprehensive plan. Mm -hmm. So theoretically, they could try, uh, but the chances uh, would be slim to none. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we do look uh, to the comprehensive plan to guide uh, zoning decisions and other land use decisions mm -hmm. uh, right. that come to the Board of Supervisors. Right. So Any, anybody can always make an argument. But, you, can. Uh, <laughs> you can. You can apply for pretty much yeah. anything if you like, mm -hmm. but, uh, but it really is the comprehensive plan uh, that, uh, mm -hmm. that, that is the guide for mm -hmm. whether or not some other use besides mm -hmm. golf course is, is uh, uh, is ultimately approved mm -hmm. uh, okay. at both of these courses. That's good. That's good to hear. So, um, talking about the process of amending the comprehensive plan, that requires, there, there's 10 supervisors on the Board of Supervisors, so that requires a majority, is that correct? That's correct. Of, to, That's to correct. amend the comprehensive plan. You know, you've stated, you know, pretty clearly and directly, I think, your opinions on amendment to the comprehensive plan uh, as, as it regards the golf course and in and, and, and other ways. Um, but you're just one supervisor. So there is some concern among some people that other supervisors who perhaps don't share your approach and who are more development oriented might decide, well, even though this is an issue that's specific to your district, they're going to vote for it anyway. Um, is that something that you know you know of that's happened in the past, or that you, you think could happen? You know, it's it's been a long time since um, you know any major decision. Uh, the district supervisor has been overruled by mm -hmm. um, by the rest of the board uh, decades, uh, really, mm -hmm. since uh, since that's happened. Um, I'm convinced that as long as uh, as I'm reasonable, mm -hmm. uh, as long as there's a process for the community to provide input uh, and to drive, you know, any mm -hmm. ultimate change in the comprehensive plan uh, that will be fine. But it is important, uh, you know, that you elect <laughs> good folks on the mm -hmm. board of supervisors, mm -hmm. uh, and not just uh, in the <coughs> district and countywide, mm -hmm. but in other districts as well. Mm -hmm. um, it is a political process, the election process, but on the other hand, uh, we do have a tradition in Fairfax County of um, folks that uh, really are, are going to be living with the consequences mm -hmm. uh, being allowed to uh, um, to work things out one mm -hmm. way or the other or be respected in their decision mm -hmm. right. uh, whenever there's uh, controversy like this. So uh, I'm not worried about it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's, as long as uh, as long as I'm there, I'll make sure that uh, land use decisions uh, that come through the process, come through rest, and are, are respected. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's good to hear. Um, I don't really have any other questions. Is there anything you'd like to close with? or uh, No, just uh, I thank you for, you know, what you're doing, your engagement in the community. It, it really is, it's, it's really important for uh, people in the community to be involved, to be aware, uh, to watch what's going on, to, to learn about the process, to understand the process. Mm -hmm and then engage where necessary uh, when things are going in a way that, that uh, people don't want to see happen. Mm -hmm. So thank you for your work.